So we're over uh, near Hamburg and we are getting a Burger Fi. They're still over there working on it. So if you've ever uh, been to a Burger Fi, I don't know where they're from. Like, are they from the Northeast? Are they from the West? I don't know uh, where this chain has come from because we've never heard of them. And then we did have a Soul Good. Kevin and I actually did a video. It was actually me and Kevin and Ashley. Uh, we had a Soul Good restaurant and it was over here and they completely tore the restaurant down and they're putting something else up. So we're at a light right now, uh, but when it changes, I'll try to, uh, I'll try to let you know what it's gonna be. Let's see. So this is a completely new building. Um, it doesn't say, Kevin. It doesn't say what it's going to be. So our cheddars that caught fire is right over here. And you can, I don't know if you can see the back of the roof over there. Yeah, see the tarp on the top of the roof? That's where our cheddars caught on fire. And they have that fence around it. Uh, I guess so that nobody can go in there and uh, steal stuff. Steal stuff. Get hurt. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and get hurt. They did have a big fish tank in there at one time, though, so it made me wonder if the if it killed any of the fish. We got uh, uh, several different boxes uh, from the PO box. This one is from Amigo Foods. And was there not any uh, note? no notes? No notes. No notes. Note. Okay, so this is Goya. Bacalatos fish fritter <laughs> mix. Um, so fish fritter mix. I can honestly say we've never made fish fritters. Now I read the directions. It seems like you just cook cook them as they are. So it's like they have fish in there already. It says contains fish and wheat. Okay. Okay. So, it has fish in so you don't have to buy fish. That's good because that's not something yeah. we buy very often. So it's a um, fish mixed in with whatever batter. Yeah. You like. so. Um, so that's awesome. And then this is Goya Timbleek, maybe it's Timbleek, Tim coconut flavored Timbley pudding. So I'm I've probably butchering the way you say this. No idea. And then this is Malta Goya. This is a malt beverage. Yeah, that's what it says in the I've too. never seen this around here uh -uh. before. No, I don't recognize these bottles. So Goya, we have tried the Goya brand. We found them at Jungle Gems International Market in Ohio, but I don't recall seeing these at all. So mm -hmm. they, we, they might have had them, but I just don't remember. Right. So we will make sure we put these uh, those in the refrigerator. Let me just say this company. This, I'm assuming someone's ordered from this company and send them to us. That just there's no note or anything. Uh, they package them very well. Those bottles are wrapped in like bubble wrap, and there's uh, packing peanuts and everything. These were in packing peanuts as well, but then there's things inside of them. Oh, what? Well, see, we've never ordered drinks online, so I didn't know how they kept them safe. That's a terrific idea. Hello. Yeah. Hey. That's a great, great idea. This is Refresco's uh, Country Club. This is the meringue, uh, meringue soda, and this is the uh, raspberry soda. Mm. Um, I have a feeling who sent all this because I believe the same person sent me a bunch of other items from Goya, but I don't want to say her name just in, um, just in case she didn't. I wouldn't want to say this is from so-and-so and then it not be. So, um, I will wait to hear from you in the comments below to see if these are from you. Uh, but thank you very, very much. We have not tried any of those items. So this next box is from Shelby. Shelby let me know that she had... I don't want you to look at it. Oh. Well, I know what she sent me. You know exactly what she sent you? I know one thing she sent me. You know the flavors of the things she sent I know me? one flavor. I'm like, I she think. probably... T I think she told me everything, but I only remember... I think... There, she sent me some marshmallows. So They're XO me, marshmallow. XO marshmallow. In Chicago, Illinois. And I'm thinking she said salted caramel was one of them. Right? Here. Ooh. That looks like... Uh, fluffer, fluffer. It's fluffer flutter. Oh! That's not what it's called, by the way. Um, ooey marshmallow goodness. Gourmet marshmallow cream made for swirling, scooping, spooning, and anything else your fabulous mind can imagine. Okay, 
This is called a, a fluffer nutter. A fluffer nutter. And it is, a, it's call. nut free. Uh, this is awesome. Um, when she said that she had ordered these for us, I thought she said marshmallows and I thought she literally ordered us bags of marshmallows. I had no idea that it was gonna be like this. Treat yourself, marshmallow variety pack. Oh boy. Live your sweet, ooh. Okay, so we have three and they do not, they are okay, not they boxed not say at all. Okay, so yeah. one of them is, um, this is, uh, yeah. One of them's bourbon flavor. Okay. One of them is salted caramel flavor. Salted caramel, I remember that. And the other one's the cookies and cream flavor. Well, the cookies and cream, you can tell which one that one is. And the bourbon, we'll just have to try. I bet the salted caramel's that one, because it's kind of tan. Yeah. And I bet the bourbon one's just white. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The bourbon one could be tan, though, because bourbon's dark. Um, oh, here. It was on the like that. He took that off. See, well, you have to take it see, off to open it. Yeah, but I didn't have the opportunity to even see that because Sorry. you stole it. Stole it. I stole it. And I was right. The bourbon is the white one. You I was right. The bourbon. stole it. Yes. So, thank you so, so, so much. I cannot wait to try these. So, um, wonder, it says dipping and scooping, uh, uh, spooning. It sounds like something. Pretty good for Ritz cracker. Well, Ritz cracker, I was thinking um, if you if you had like those pretzel rods, oh. that would be good in there too. Yeah, I like everything on a Ritz. <laughs> now this is from Josh, right? Mm -hmm. Is this one for Josh? Oh! You, you were just looking for those today. <laughs> yes! Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, thank you so much, Josh. No, I, Jason had sent me a message on my Instagram. And he sent me, he said that there's a bunch of new Twizzlers out and he talked about the Islers. And um, so I found the Islers. I found those at Kroger, but I've been looking in every store. We've been to a bunch of stores today yeah, none of and none of them had uh, these, these strawberry smoothie. And to be completely honest, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for. I, I was looking for something new. Uh, but we had tried, all I kept seeing was like the, those like orange creamsicle or whatever those mm -hmm. were. We've yeah, had does. those before. And so I do not recall seeing mm -hmm. these no, anywhere though. No, especially with that light color on the side. Yeah. So I'm so glad we have not reviewed the Islers yet. Yeah, now we can put that with Now we can put these with them. Yes. We will put these with the Islers and we will try this with the Islers together. Thank you very uh, much. Yes. Thank you. We appreciate all of this very, very much. So I've been uh, really bad about vlogging uh, this week. Um, even when we've gone out to uh, shop and stuff like that, I've been bad about it. Uh, for a while, I was only one person per household could go shopping. So I did not vlog in any of the stores because it was just me. And so um, Kevin would either uh, be at home or he would be waiting out in the car. And it's just, it's too, for me, I felt like it was too much trouble to shop and vlog at the same time. But then now, now the whole family can go back in the store again, in most places at least, uh, that I'm aware of. And uh, they've removed the signs from the door, like at Walmart, they've removed the signs that said only one member per household. And uh, so Kevin's gone in with me and I've still been bad about it. I haven't really been vlogging a lot. Um, it's like we get in there and I'm looking for, for particular things and so I just don't even think about it. Um, and we really haven't, uh, uh, run around a lot because it's so hot outside it's it's been very very for us it's been very very hot and um so and i'm not complaining at all because i enjoy the warmer weather and it's nice like yesterday or it might have been the day before i think it was the day before kevin went out uh kevin and i went out on the front porch and we played rummy and so um uh yeah, that was the day before yesterday, but I enjoy, so I enjoy sitting outside in the shade and it's very, very nice. So I'm not complaining at all, but it's been so hot that, that we haven't done a lot of running around. Uh, but we did finish the second season of Dead to Me. That's the one with 
uh, Christina Applegate, and I don't know what the other girl's name is. I have no idea. She was in the show um, Bloodline, which I watched by myself. Kevin did not watch that. Um, I, I would like him to see her in Bloodline, even though I did not like how Bloodline ended. I said it way back when I finished it, that it was like somebody else wrote the final like three episodes. It was totally weird. Um, but I might watch it again and think, oh, this is terrific, you know? So um, I would like for her, for him to see her in Bloodline. And Sissy Spacek was awesome in Bloodline. Uh, but she also played a nurse in ER. Uh, this girl did so we've known her and there have been other shows that I've seen her in too. So anyway Dead to me is on Netflix It is an adult show and I say that mainly because of the language the language is like Christina Applegate every other word is F F F F F she like very rarely says a full a complete sentence without using that word so um, you just have to know that that's how she talks and you have to get over it or you have to decide this isn't for me. So, um, I thought, um, I think there were like 10 episodes in the first season and 10 episodes in the second season and it was pretty good. There was one episode, I think it was like the fourth one and I thought this was a boring episode. It was, it was just boring. Hardly anything happened and Kevin and I didn't even talk about it or anything. It just, it was just boring. I, I, I'm thinking it was the fourth episode, but I've gone back by myself because I can do my work here at the computer and I can have something else up on the other screen. And so I am currently watching again House of Cards. And I have to say that the theme music for House of Cards is one of my, it would be in my top 10 list of favorite things. Uh, Game of Thrones, that would be in a top 10. That's what Kevin, Kevin and I ought to do that. I ought to write that down. Theme song, theme music. Um, huh? So many. Oh, it would be hard. I'm not saying that that would not be hard, but that would be a good one because definitely House of Cards and definitely Game of Thrones would be in my, my top 10 of theme uh, music. Um, so I have been watching that just by myself while I'm working, editing pictures, stuff like that. Um, last week in the video, I showed where Kevin was cutting the lines, the grooves on the deck. I wanted to update you and tell you that that worked. Uh, we had some rain like... I think like two nights after that mm -hmm. and Kevin went out and looked and he said there's no, to be yeah, th no puddle on the back porch which is fantastic so it worked um, Kevin uh, for for his birthday I've mentioned in last week's video can I see your keyboard for a minute the one I actually got you I was gonna show it um, for Kevin's birthday he bought himself a computer so I consider that a birthday present he did not say specifically that was for his birthday, but that's what I'm considering it as. It's a birthday gift. So, I think like five years ago, Kevin, uh, Kevin usually when he gets a computer, he doesn't get one from the company. He'll put it together because it's cheaper to... It's cheaper and, and in order to get what you want, to get the speeds of things that you want, to get what he needs for gaming with Andrew... Um, it's better for him to buy the things, the components separately, and then put it all together. So I think like five years ago on his channel, which is called, he has a channel called Movie HQ, and uh, it's linked below. Um, but he, there was a video of him putting his computer together. So he is going to have two, if you're interested in his computer, I know not everyone is interested in that, um, so that's why it's on his channel. Um, but he's going to be putting his computer together, this new computer, and showing you everything that he bought. He tells you how much it cost, all that stuff. And then he also bought a, um, a monitor stand. It's a, what do you call it? A three monitor, three monitor, stand. Three monitor stand. And literally, it's called that because it holds three monitors. And so... What's good about that is Kevin and I have always, for a long, long time, 
Kevin has two monitors, I have two monitors, and I love it because like I was just telling you, I can watch something on one screen and I can be working on the other screen. Truth be told, I could easily move to three monitors oh, yeah. because I could have the TV going on, the Netflix going on on that third screen and then be busy on the other two instead of jumping from tab to tab on this one. Um, so I could easily do that too. But the reason why it was um, so appealing to Kevin is because we have our um, uh, security cameras and uh, now on that third monitor, the one up at the top, he can have our security cameras up there at all times and he doesn't have to cover them up. I've seen him cover them up a couple times, but for the most part, I can look over at any time and see uh, the security cameras and, and see all around the house if anyone's anywhere near, if any packages have been dropped off, we can tell if the mail person's been here, we can see if anybody's pulling up in a car, so it's really nice. But so for, for Kevin, for himself, he bought that computer. And then he wanted, um, Ashley said, what can I buy for you? Because I'm going to get you something. You need to tell me what you want. And Kevin said, I would like a, a keyboard, a small keyboard. Because he had his large keyboard, which is like, it's like this, but bigger. A full-size keyboard. Um, he basically had two key, full size keyboards sitting on his desk and it took up too much space. It was clunky. It was too big. So his main keyboard is still a really nice full size big keyboard that I think he may have done a box opening of that on his channel a long time ago. I'm not sure. If, I'm sure we showed it in a vlog. So anyway, now he can have this one that Ashley got for him. Um, he can have it behind the other one and, um, he can use it so and i think it was only like 30 dollars or something like that from yeah, amazon like 31 for tax yeah so not bad at all but um it reminds me he has a um what is that called a uh the mac yeah the, i used to that used to have a mac yeah keyboard. it was just like that. it looked identical to this one you can look uh, it up to your ipad or anything That'd yeah it's awesome. it's a very nice uh uh lightweight keyboard um <clears throat> But so yesterday, um, we went to uh, Kevin's, uh, his parents' house, and they, um, uh, they gave uh, uh, Ashley a really nice bracelet. It's from the Bradford Exchange, and it's, um, it's specifically for a granddaughter. And it has all these, it's silver, and it has um, little charms on it and stuff like that. It's just a really, it's very... Uh, delicate it's not nothing gaudy or big or clunky or anything like that it's a very delicate little bracelet but then it still is shiny enough and uh, substantial enough for you to be able to see it from a distance so it, they gave her that and we we visited for a little while and um, played with their dog they have a very cute little dog um, but after that after we went to visit with them we went to at home and I have, I'll have to show you, um, or maybe if you just look one, well, I can probably show you so that you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I would like, when we replace our couch in the den, I would like a couch called, it's called a Chesterfield. And I've mentioned it before, I think on uh, Facebook that I would like a Chesterfield couch. So I'm going to show this to you. So this is a Chesterfield couch and they come in different colors and they come in different sizes. You can get like a love seat type. You can get uh, like chairs and ottomans, things like that. But these usually run around uh, 20 uh, for anywhere from 2000 to like $2,500. And they can be more than $2,500. They can be. It just, I guess it depends on how massive the couch is. Um, so, I had been on the at home. At home used to be called Garden Ridge. I had been on their website about a week ago, look, just looking around to see what they had. And they had several Chesterfield couches. And they were only like, I don't know, I'm going to guess like $600 because I truly don't remember. And Kevin, I told Kevin and we were both like, huh, we've never noticed 
uh, the last time we've been in there, them having a Chesterfield couch. And so, like I said, they, they had different colors. They had like a gray, a velvety looking one. They had a brown leather one. They had different colors. And so we went in there yesterday to see if they, you know, do they in fact really have this Chesterfield couch? Because if they did, it's like, why in the world isn't it $2,500 like it is everywhere else? Well, they do have a Chesterfield couch in Home Goods. They actually had several, but they were like mini sizes. They didn't look as good either. No, they didn't look as good, but they were so, they were so small. I mean, it was like, I'm not, they weren't, they weren't like child size. I don't want to say that, but they didn't look like anything like you would have in your living room either. They look like maybe something, maybe if you were going to choose something for your hallway, if you have a big open hallway or something, and a lot of old houses like this, you know, you have a lot of space in the hallway. Um, we have a lot of doors in our hallway, so we do have some space. Um, I remember years ago, my parents had a, um, like a, a, a dresser like that out in the hall. So, I mean, you can put furniture out there. We just, we don't have any furniture out there. Um, but I guess that's the size that this Chesterfield couch looked like. It looked like something, it was smaller. It was much, much smaller. The Chesterfield couches that Kevin and I have seen that we like are in, you typically see them in pubs, uh, especially over in the United Kingdom. In any of the good old pubs that you go in, they usually have these great big Chesterfield couches. Um, you also see them a lot of times like um, on mo in movies and on TV when they're showing like uh, these people that are in a, a big library or in a like a privately owned men's club or something like that. They'll walk in and you'll see these Chesterfield couches facing towards each other, uh, you know, towards it. Um, so that's where you usually see them. So to get a good one, you are going to pay several thousand dollars. And I'm completely willing to do that for a couch that's going to last years and years and years. Now, I would have never said that, said that before because, you know, when you have young kids, I don't think that's practical. They need something that um, if they spill cool light or something like that on it, you know, and of course this is leather. If you get the leather ones, you know, you can wipe it off. But still, I think with kids, um, you don't want to spend that much money on a couch. Also with pets, I don't think you want to spend that much on a couch. So we have, that's the reason why we have not gotten a couch. We always said that uh, once Guido died, that might sound morbid, but that's just the truth, that once Guido died, we would probably get a new couch because um, he shed so much. Uh, little did we realize that the cat sheds just as much. He really does. And now he lays where Guido used to lay. So we have replaced pug fur with cat fur. And we probably wouldn't notice it so much if we didn't pet on him so much. But Kevin loves to pet on Chapel constantly. I do too, but normally I'm petting on his face and around his face and his whiskers and stuff like that. And so, and his head and it, you know, just around in here. So he doesn't shed as much where I pet him. Kevin likes to pet him, you know, his back. And so of course he sheds when you do that. So I still think it's going to be a while before we get one, not because of the fur necessarily, but because of his claws. Because I don't want to spend $2,500 on a couch and chapel poke holes in it with his claws. And I am just assuming that he would poke a hole through it. Um, I mean, I, I would expect it to be a very thick leather costing that much, you know, because it costs so much. But when he jumps up on the couch, you know, he is putting his 
claws into that couch to raise himself up there. So, I don't think we would be smart right now to spend that money. Had the ones at, at home, had they been a nice big couch, then yes, I would have gone ahead even with Chapel because that's not as much money. But once you spend so much money, you know, that is an investment and you want to be able to keep that for years and years and years and years. So, we'll probably, all that said, uh, we will probably wait until, um, wait many, many years, many years uh, before we get a new couch, as long as this one lasts. Because this one, I think the reason why it's lasted so long is because it has a bed in it. It folds out into a bed and I think that keeps it firm. Otherwise, I think it would have totally fallen apart by now. Um, so as long as Kevin can tolerate it, um, we'll probably keep it for a while longer. Well, it's been a couple weeks since we did a, uh, a, a list, uh, like of our favorites, um, as far as just different lists that we've been doing and during the, the top five, top tens. Yes. And I have absolutely loved once we give our top, uh, 10 or five or whatever, I've loved the, uh, to hear what you all have to say. So those of you that have chosen to participate, I absolutely love it. Um, and, and if you like one, we don't necessarily mention it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think some some people in the comments... You shouldn't it, be offended because we didn't pick one you right, like. Right, <laughs> exactly. The way that it's worded, it's like, you mean you didn't put this on the list? And I, I can't hear you saying it, so I can't tell. But the tone is like... I'm mad because this didn't make the list, and I don't. And it may think, not be, and it may not be, but that's it. so. You're gonna have your own list, and we have our own list, and I'm sure. My oh, and my list. I'm sure if I listen to a bunch of my pick different ones, you know. Yeah, I'm sure there's, there's so gonna be them. things, especially with these. Uh, uh, things that we've forgotten that we probably should have added, and uh, but anyway, Kevin and I have not talked about these. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is our top five documentaries okay. and so um several of mine were on netflix but then several of mine have been out for a while we're gonna start at number five and i even have an honorable mention and the only reason i have an honorable mention is because i'm watching one right now i'm watching uh right now i'll just go ahead and say it because it's not in the top five uh but it's the uh, jeffrey epstein filthy rich i am working my oh, way through that i saw that and I really have to be in the mood to watch it because it's so gross. It's just so disgusting. And it's stuff that, it's stuff, that if you already know about Jeffrey Epstein, you already know the story, but this is like everything's added to it and you get all to hear details. all the details and it just makes you want to take a shower when you're really. It's Some things just, I don't want to watch. It's just gross. And so. I am enjoying hearing the process and how everything came to light, but in the meantime, hearing the actual nitty gritty details, it's rough. So I would not, you know, if you don't want to hear all that stuff, don't watch it because it, it's rough to watch. Anyway, so that's what we're doing is top five documentary. So what is your number five? Uh, mine, my first, number five? Mm-hmm. Um, it's Full Metal Jacket. I think that's a very accurate documentary of war. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was gonna say, it's not <laughs> documentary at all. Uh, Super Size Me. Okay. That was my number five. We used to own Super Size mm -hmm. Me. Um, yeah. And he actually came out with another one. Morgan Spurlock, I yeah, think Morgan. is his name. He actually came out with a new one that's about um, chicken uh -huh. and um, all the claims restaurants can legally make, even though they're completely bogus lies. So um, he came up with his own chicken restaurant. All of a sudden, it's on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing on YouTube for we free. We should watch it together. I already watched it. You watched it without me? You when did you watch it? Uh, a couple weeks ago. What was I doing? Who knows? I don't know what you do. Well, I'm wondering why wasn't I invited to this I, you party? Could, we, could, we could watch it together again. Uh, that would be, it's the one thing I remember about that uh, Super Size Me that stood out to me was I always, when I haven't eaten at McDonald's in years and years and years, years. Um, probably since that year we went to Vegas and came back through the airport and oh, got yeah. it. 
And yeah. I mean, I mean, I'd be there if you guys for lunch hour you, but but that was in like 2012 or something. Um, but for me to go regularly, I haven't went. But I remember I used to always get the uh, fillet of fish, and and he it seems like that's he, said he made him sick. That's like the one sandwich, isn't that the one at the end? That, yes. Towards the end, he that puts he in keeps a bar, it, a jar, and it never changed. It never broke down. No, and the fries either. No, it never grew mold. I think, no, it I think the fish sandwich did grow mold. I can't remember for sure. I'm thinking it got a little stinky, but the fries never literally changed. never changed at all. Yeah, it was anyway. it was weird. Okay, so my number five is going to be uh, leaving Neverland and yeah. leaving See, Neverland. I never uh, Leaving Neverland. It is. Uh, it's about uh, Michael Jackson. If you haven't seen it, and I was just talking about the the uh, Jeffrey Epstein, the Michael Jackson one. You're gonna he hear details in that too that you probably never wanted to hear. But I thought they did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four. Tiger Game. That's my number four. Oh really? Yes. It with was good. Joe Exotic. It was good, but there's there were better ones. Oh, listen, uh, yeah, I loved Tiger King. I never expected to get so wrapped up in that, uh, but um, Ashley is the one that told us to watch it, and she said, you know, you think you've met everybody, and then the next episode, you meet and new, somebody else new people, along. and they're even crazier than the first set, and um, so anyway, yeah, Tiger yeah, King. Good... Okay, number three. Uh, mine was Evil Genius, and it's it's about a bank heist basically, mm -hmm. and and it was just the the twists and weird just the weirdness that was with that thing. And we watched just, that together. We did. Yeah. There was another one that was similar to that, um, but I don't remember, I couldn't remember the name of it. That would be kind of like a tie for a third, but I don't know what it was. My number three was the Staircase. Yeah, I that loved. Was a good one. Love the staircase. You can get on Netflix right now. If for some reason you never watched it or you you thought about it and you forgot, you need to watch it. It's yeah. one of those that I told my aunt to watch when she got Netflix, and she was really enjoying that. And you hear though, after you watch this, you you tend to think kind of one way, and it's and people have said just keep in mind that this was written or it was put together by someone who had a very distinct view. And well, they, they skewed it that way. Well, I had my opinion from the get-go, though. Yeah. I, I, from the very beginning, had yeah, you, my opinion. you can't opinion. say what was. But. No, but I had a opinion. Whether they want you to believe this way or that way, I still... Right. You know, a lot of people with a lot of things, they believe this way 100%. And I'm over here going, uh, no, I'm not falling for that. So, anyway, my number two is The Bills of Grey Gardens. Uh, my number two was the staircase. Okay. <laughs> uh, the Bills of Grey Gardens, my, I'll go ahead and tell you. My number one is the Grey Gardens. So, I own the... My game. number one is the Grey Gardens as well. <laughs> I love that movie. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my And then gosh. I like the movie that Drew Barrymore and them did afterwards. Jessica so, Lange. Yeah. Um, if you've never seen Grey Gardens, it... They're quite the characters. It's fantastic. So I, I don't remember the build. Was that like a follow-up later on? Yes. Okay. But so I remember well, seeing that. Kind of. The you have Grey Gardens, which we own both of these. We own both of these documentaries. Um, the Grey Gardens is about it was this huge house in the Hamptons, and these women were um, they were kind of like hoarders, but they were filthy and they didn't clean and there would be raccoons coming in through the roof Awful. and they didn't get anything fixed. And they didn't and have any money. They didn't have the money to get things fixed and so they have this huge house, but it was Literally decaying natural. around them. Mm -hmm. And so the bills of Grey Gardens, so maybe you've seen Grey Gardens, but a lot of people have not seen the bills of Grey Gardens. <coughs> it's like in addition to that, it is footage that they took at the same time That's for right. Grey Gardens, and they were able to make a whole other video for it, a yeah. whole other documentary. The first one covered, the Grey Gardens covers pretty much the whole story. It does, but if but you then want all the extra, extra footage, little tidbits. Oh, yeah. if you love Grey Gardens. I remember Gardens. that now. And then there was a book where a friend of theirs lived with them. I still have the book too. A friend of theirs lived with them for a little while, and it was called My Life at Grey Gardens. And it is, it's, it's a really yeah. interesting they're, right? they're very, very interesting. So, yeah, I cannot believe you. I like that one. I am so weird for a while there. I was watching that probably once a week. Yeah. Great it, It's a good, it was a good uh, show. Because you just can't beat the bills. They, they were wonderful. Okay, now we're going to do our uh, 
top Netflix original dramas. Yeah, I have eight. We don't watch a lot of the comedy shows. No, they have don't. a lot of comedy <laughs> shows. Actually, do I have anything that's a comedy? Uh, I made sure I got all dramas. No, I don't have any comedies. But I don't think, I was looking through a list of the comedies they offer. Kevin and I just, we really like dramas. Yeah. Um, but I do, I'm, I'm, I have a top seven. What do you have? Eight. Okay. So, okay, then I can go for an eight because I can wrap all these up in one. My number eight would be, it's called Criminal, but they have a Criminal Germany, Criminal France, and Criminal Spain. Right. I liked all of those, and I just thought those, they all, uh, I, I told you about it when we were, uh, at the time we were watching them during a vlog, they all take place in a, um, where they're asking questions. In an interview room. In an interview yeah. room at the... At interrogation the, room. Whatever interrogation we'll room at the police department. And so that is the whole thing. And either you like it or you don't. But you're seeing this person who's been accused of doing something sitting across from this interrogator. And you don't know where the story's going to go. And it's fascinating. So, okay. So now we can get to our top seven. So well, our, my, my eight. Our top eight, yeah. My eight was Altered Carbon, which you've never even seen. And I need to watch the second season, but the first season was excellent, so. Yeah, I would say that. You wouldn't like it. You don't think I would? No. I like sci-fi stuff. Uh, you might like this. I don't know. I mean, I'd watch it again to catch up for the second season. There's two seasons out. Yeah. But although I didn't like that one that you like, that Western one. Yeah. If it's anything wouldn't. like that. No, it's not like that. What was that one called? Westworld. Westworld, yeah. Westworld's actually really good. The first season... Um, was really good. The second season was good. And I haven't watched the third one yet. So, anyway. okay. My number seven is uh, Stranger Things. Okay. Right. Did you do your number eight? My number eight was Criminal. Okay. Criminal and mine Germany. Was the Carbon. Okay. So my number seven is Stranger Things. My seven is Stranger Things as well. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Stranger Things. I loved Stranger Things the first season. Then after that, it's been okay, but they didn't hit it like they did that first season, you know, for me at least. That's I, why it's lower on my list. That's why it's a seven. I think the last season was pretty good. Was it the one in the mall? That's, yeah. It was better. Yeah, it, it was, was better, better than, than the one the before. Yeah. yeah. Was that the third season? Though? Yeah, I think so. And yeah. So that was better than, I don't know what season it was, but it was better than the one before it. Yeah, the one before that where they were, it was in the ground and stuff. I just didn't get into no, it. No. As, I as didn't much, it was good, but it wasn't as interesting. Okay. So number, that's seven. Number six, I put Mindhunter. Um, I put The Witcher. The Witcher, okay, yeah. yeah. I like The Witcher. The Witcher was good. I, I that it. didn't even make my list, yeah. but yeah. The Witcher, the Witcher was good. The first episode, I didn't know if I was going to like it. We both were kind of like, eh, I don't know about this but show. Then we, really then we got into it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, my number... So, what was your number six? Um, Mindhunter. Mindhunter, that's right. And Mindhunter, let me tell you, for all those people who really like Mindhunter, they don't even know if it's going to come back or not. Because... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, everybody's waiting for it to come back. Yeah, because something happened to where... Like the person, the main person making it, they're working on another, pro a different uh, project. Yeah. So they don't know if they're even going to do Mindhunter. Yeah, again, so. that'd be a shame. Okay. Um, number five, I put The Crown. The Crown. That's so <laughs> Isn't that funny? funny? Yeah. It's funny that we got the same number, not yes. only the same show, the same but number. The same number. Um, the Crown, it's it, it's good. Uh, number four, I put one that you've never seen, but I want That's you to okay. watch That's okay. I've got it. another one you haven't seen. Okay. Bloodline. Yeah, Bloodline would be good. Uh, mine's Lost in Space. Oh, no. And again, watch the first season. Need to catch up on the second season. We watch so many shows together that we usually don't watch a whole lot separately. Right. Um, and when we do, it's usually I'm on the computer, Tammy's watching without me, not the other way around. Right. So, but Lost in Space, if you've never seen that, that's good. You might even like it. I thought that was a movie. Mm -hmm. Lost in Space. Oh. Okay. It was a Netflix series. Did they not do a movie, Lost in Space? Uh, yeah, but it wasn't. It's not like the series. Oh. The series is better. I think they did a movie. Number three, uh, Ozark. Mine was Mindhunter. Okay. Um, Ozark, we just finished not that long ago. and uh, I mean, I'm curious what your number two is going to be. Brilliant. Uh, my number two is House of Cards. Okay. But I'm curious what your number one is going to be. And Ozark's number two. Okay. House of Cards, I'm watching right now all over again. Love House it. of Cards is my number one. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the Haunting of Hill House was my number, is number one, and I need to. I would like to watch oh, it again. Oh, I forgot, forgot about that. I was looking at the list, and I didn't. It didn't 
Donna, is that your number one? It was scary as heck. Is that your number one? Yes, I loved it. That would probably be my number two if I added, it was if I added so that in. Good. That would be a number two. It was I, up there. Yeah, I, I don't, we've only watched it once. Yeah. And they shot it really freaky too. I would like to see that again. They did a lot of those in one shot. Like they would do the camera, they would do a lot of the scenes in like one camera angle. Like they would go around and like um, a TV would block it and people were like scrambling while they, the thing was blocked and they'd come out the other side and things would be shifted. Well, I read too that there's a lot of um, hidden, hidden things. things. Yeah. 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 Like something in the corner that you yes, may not that even see. you didn't see. see the first time or you watched it. And if you watched it. A glint of eyes and somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I, we need to watch that again because it's it been was a while. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't I'm they not... working on another one of them? I thought they yes. were. Yeah. Yes. That'd and I had looked it up when it was supposed to come out. There's a YouTube video, I think it's on YouTube, of them filming one of the scenes and then they're going around. The reason I said the TV is because that was one of the things. They go around and the TV kind of blocks some of the scene. And as it comes out around, it's shifted behind it. Mm -hmm. But they're showing it higher up to where you can see everybody scrambling to move around. So it, it shifts. See, I don't know. And then it goes behind a wall. And to, like, it's just wow. Some things I like to see behind the scenes. But other things, it's like, I don't mood. know. <laughs> exactly. So they have a thing on Disney Plus right now of the Mandalorian. And... Kevin's been wanting to watch it and and I hadn't told him this before now the reason I, I kind of don't know if I want to watch it I don't know if it'll ruin it for me or not I mean, but I don't think it would I don't know there's I mean, you know it's not real <laughs> I know but I like to pretend, pretend it's real. real that he's the little child and, yeah well they talk about how the the scenery is filmed in the background where it's all um, generated and projected right there on set so right. when the actors are acting out stuff, they're actually seeing the backgrounds and stuff behind them. Yeah, and, and I can see that, that a lot that'd be cool. uh, where they could do everything right there on a set and they don't have to go to a location to mm -hmm. film all that. Um, I don't know. We, we might very well end up watching it. Okay, so now the next that we have two more lists today. And they're both with music. So I figure we would do... Uh, and these are going to be so all over the place. Let's do the... Let's do movies. Okay, I've got two extras. Oh, well you... Well, only because I had them on my list and I found other things later and I hated to take them off my list. So. You know what? I did that with several items. I had... Um, uh, I mean, I could just scratch them off. We can just do 10. No, no, no. Right? If we do two extra, we can, no, we can do 12 because I can still see through the oh, ones. Oh, okay. I've marked through four. <laughs> in order to make room yeah. for new ones that I um, yeah and I completely scribbled out one. This is one of those both of these next two with the songs. This is one of those where if you brought something up that we might be like, ooh, I forgot how good that music is, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like yeah, because I was listening to some of it when I was making this list, and it's like, oh, that's a really I forgot about that that song, you know, or that music from that. But movie. then there's some classics that I know people would put on a list that I did not put on mine, and I. Yes, I know about it, but it's like they just didn't make my list. Right. Um, okay, so if I had to come up with a number 12, I would say Beetlejuice. I, I, heard, just, I heard that one too. Halloween would be mine. I okay. love the music from Halloween. Okay. Uh, my number uh, 11 would be Bram Stoker's Dracula. That one's pretty good. That whole CD, that whole soundtrack. I used to cool. own the soundtrack, yeah, really and you really, you need to be in the right you need to be in a mood to listen right. to it. It's kind of dark. It's dark and it's heavy. Drumming. It's da -da. Yeah. It's a very, very it's a drumming dark. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, but Annie Lennox sang mm -hmm. a song on that, and it's just. A She's. Song. I think hers was the end credits. It's a really yes, yeah. it is. It's a really good uh, uh, soundtrack. My eleven would be E.T. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. e. That's a good one. Okay, my number ten. Your number ten is Schindler's List. You know, I didn't even think about that. And you know what? These are, I want to make sure I'm clear. This isn't like music in the movie. Because a lot of, I like, I'll give you an example. I'm going to throw one out there. Forrest Gump. I love the movie all throughout Forrest Gump. It's awesome music. But that's not the theme to Forrest yeah. Gump. So the these the are dad, the dad, themes. Dad, dad, when the, the, when the, the, uh, at the very beginning of the movie when that feather is floating yeah. in, that's the theme to Forrest yeah. Gump. Which so is still these good are music. the theme songs. Okay. <laughs> Mine's Blade Runner, number 10. And see, I don't know that. You'd have, it's a classic. Okay. Um, I probably heard it, but I can't think of it I right now. I think you've only seen that movie once, though. So. Um, my number 9 is Titanic. Uh, let me see where my number 9 is. The Avengers, believe it or not. 
Okay. It's a very upbeat, beady kind of. My number eight is Fiddler on the Roof. That's good. That's a good one. All those songs are good too. Yeah. Mine's Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is very good, mm -hmm. and I know it. And yes, it's a, it's yeah, I like that, and it gets you in a good mood mm -hmm. when you hear it. Um, I think I tend, tend most of mine on my list. I've noticed were very orchestra, orchestra related. Yes. Orchestrated. Heavy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like really like a like a huge orchestra plays them. Right. Uh, my number seven is one that you've already mentioned. Halloween. Oh, yeah, that's a good movie. I yeah. love it, and I love the remix. If you've ever heard like somebody do like the Halloween remix, it's a little beatier. Mm -hmm. It's it has a lot of beats in it, and it's it's just like it's like techno music. Right? Yeah. I just really like it. Mine is Superman. Okay. And not the newer one. I'm talking about the old the school old from one. the 80s With one. With the Christopher Reeve. Yeah. Okay. YouTube good. will copyright strike us for the music. No, <laughs> not for you humming it. I sure you will. never know. Number six, I know that you will think this is totally hokey and there's no way you would have this on your list. Number six is The Never Ending Story. No, that's good. That I haven't heard the actual song. That song makes me so happy. Uh, mine's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Really? I love that movie. Yeah, those are good. Uh, my number five is uh, Skyfall from James Bond, Adele. I have James Bond. Oh, oh well, there's a lot of good ones. There's all. I, I didn't pick a I mean, specific a one. I mean, a lot of good Because ones. all the James Bond ones are really good. Oh, so, so you didn't put a specific I didn't put a specific I mean, oh. just in general, the James Bond theme. Oh, okay. You what know? number was yours? Five. Oh. So, okay. They were both in front. Listen. But Skyfall yes. is like one of the best yes, ones. Yes. There are so many... So, so many James Bond themes yeah. that are oh, yeah. that are fantastic. Um, all of those beginnings, you know, when you see those in the movie theater, they're just awesome. Uh, and you see the figures in there. And um, see, that was number five. Okay, number four is Somewhere in Time. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Mine's Interstellar. Uh, I don't know if this is the theme, but the, the song is the Cornfield Chase. That's the one that's like the most recognized for Interstellar. That's the one I like. So that's the one you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Because it took me forever to figure out which one it was. That's it. <laughs> my number three is Harry Potter. Mine's number, number three as well. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, uh, we probably matched on number one. I don't uh, know about number two. Probably maybe. No, we didn't match on number one because I now that you said that, I know what your number one is. That's my number two. Number two, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's my number one. Yeah. So what's your number two? My number two is Inception. Inception. Okay. That's a uh, heavy, isn't it? Isn't it's, that heavy? It's orchestra music. Yeah, yes. but isn't it a heavier? It, uh, no, it's a piano. Well, kind of. I'll have to. Listen You're talking to that. about the one that's in the movie where they're going. Bum, yes. Bum. Well, that's, that's a little bit I'm of that, but it's not deep. Okay. That's not my number two. So what's your number one? Okay. Um, the theory of everything. It's the oh, end. Oh yeah, that was good. It's the end where they play. Uh, like the, end title. the cinematic orchestra plays the arrival of the birds, and that's one of my all-time favorites. Mm. Uh, that is good. Classical pieces. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Find it on YouTube. Uh, it's just gorgeous. You could just sit back and just. It is very to relaxing. It. Close your eyes and it's it's fantastic. Well, see the it's Inception beautiful. music. I, I listen to a lot of piano music on YouTube, mm -hmm. and people play the piano play just on piano. Mm -hmm. and it's very it's a beautiful song. That's why I like it. So, and then your number one was Lord, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Pretty much any of them. Yeah. <laughs> they all kind of sound the same. You know, though, I, I liked turning that on. You can turn on uh, somebody's playlist on YouTube and listen to the whole thing there. And it's just really nice it music. Is. And yeah. you think of the movie as you're hearing the, the music. You're, yeah. you're thinking about the movie anyway. Um, so even if you haven't watched those movies that we named, you can look up the music. I would look up the music just to see what you think. Um, okay, now we have TV themes. No, only had ten. And I think this one's gonna be way all over the place. This one's gonna be all over the place, but I think there's classic TV themes like. The Brady Bunch, of course, I love, and the Jeffersons. Yeah, but I would never put those. In and my Alice and the, the Golden Girls, and yeah, there's things like that. The the things that are on my list are like, like 
songs like just I like I just named for like TV things. Yeah. Like they're beautiful, Mine are for the beautiful most part. music. Um, not just kind of a gimmicky. Learn the words and anybody can sing along. You know, um, most, I've got a couple of those. Most TV theme songs are a, a, a kind of a sing along kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I've got a couple of those. Mine pretty much are not. Um, I have one that is. Um, but my number 10 is uh, Stranger Things, again. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, MASH is what I have. Yeah, I like MASH. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number 9 is uh, Call the Midwife. You're going to be surprised. Call what? the Midwife? Yeah, that's good. Call the Midwife. Uh, Muppet Show. <laughs> See, that's one of those, it's time to start Yeah, music. but it's that's still one of those. It, it still is cute. But, it, but that's one of the ones you said that, and it's like, yeah, that's, that's one of them. Yes. Um, my number eight is The Sopranos. Oh, yeah, I didn't think Woke about that. Woke up this morning. Yeah, yeah. And mine's The Office. But that's another kind of... That's a good one, though. And I remember uh, back when I was working my way through The Office, was back, Gavin was a little baby, and I, w I would keep him while Christina would go to work. And every time that song came on, if he was crying or if he was just, if he was He'd playing with his me. toys, he would stop everything to hear that, that <laughs> he song, the, 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 that music. theme. Um, he loved that office theme. Okay, so num my number... Um, seven. Seven what is... number eight? My number eight was The Sopranos. Okay, yeah. Woke up this morning. Yeah, that was a good song. Um, my number um, seven. seven is uh, Big Love, God Only Knows. Oh, Lord. From... Uh, da, 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 God da, da, da. Only Knows. Yeah. That was a good song. I like that. It's very happy. Yeah, and it's the Beach Boys. Yeah, mine's Big Bang Theory, which is another kind of... Yes, but I love that one too. Yeah. If we were kind of to do a different list with kind of like catchy songs like that, then I would have oh, a completely different... Oh, it would be Flintstones and the Jetsons yeah. and all... Yeah, you know. Flintstones. Yeah, it'd be all those kind of... But it reminds me of uh, Plane Strange and yeah. Automobiles, John Candy. Um, okay, my number six is Ripper Street. See, you, you mentioned all these, and it's like, oh, that's a really good song. Uh, West Wing. Oh, the West Wing is good. Yeah. yeah I See, I, that could have been on my list, yeah. too. The West Wing's really good. Um, okay. Number five is Victoria. Oh, yeah, that is good. Yeah. Um, mine's Battlestar Galactica, which I know you've never heard, but... I don't think so. Yeah, it's good. It's an orchestrated kind of thing. Uh, my number four is Sherlock. Star Trek Next Generation. Specifically. Oh, yeah, I love Next Generation. Okay. Yeah, Sherlock's really good, too. Sherlock's though. good, too. Uh, my number three is Downton Abbey. You would just have to hear it. Oh, dun, yeah, yeah, dun, yeah, dun, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's piano. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine's, uh, yeah, the da, da, da. Yeah. Um, and you think about them driving up to yeah. the house. House You're, of Cards is my number three. Number three, okay. Uh, my number two is Game of Thrones. Mine uh, is number two is Westworld, which is really good. I could listen to that over and over again. I would have to hear it again because I only watched a couple of episodes of Westworld. It was too violent and sexual for you. Yeah. But that was only the first season. They didn't get that way the second I season. think they were trying to get people to watch it and it made, Just me, like not, all the other and it made me not want to just watch it. Just like every other show. So I would have to hear it again because so, I don't uh, remember it. It's just like True Blood. True Blood was all sex that first season, and then after that, they only ever saw it. Ozark was the same way. Yeah, that's all, true. All kinds of shows do that the first season. Um, in True Blood, we did Game a bad, bad thing. Yeah. I thought about putting that, uh, that song been, that on here, one, yeah. because that is a really good song, but... Uh, but yeah, Westworld was my number two. If you've never heard the theme from Westworld, you should look it up, because it's really, really good. I'll have to listen to that. So I said Game of Thrones is my number two. <clears throat> my number one is House, House of Cards. Mine's Game of Thrones. So we just switched them. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, my house cards was number three. Oh, house, so what was your number? Westworld was number two. So what? what is your three, two, and one? House of Cards, Westworld, Game of and Game of Thrones. And mine was Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones, and House of Cards. I like Downton Abbey, though. That's a good, it's a good happy song. Yeah, it's happy. It's very pleasant. It's, it's very... It's themed very well for the show. Yeah. Uh, so if you all are interested... I'm sure there's other things that can be added to this oh, that, yeah. that we just did you may mention some it's like oh yeah <laughs> exactly but you could tell by the ones that we named kind of the themes that we like they're very um 
Well, they're they're done by orchestras and they're very except for a few of the TV it's ones. Not, I had. Yeah, it's not like catchy music because if we did another one, trust me, I could come up with a whole different one. Oh list. yeah, think about it. you got Seinfeld and Yeah, you know, all well of those. I always loved the Jeffersons. Yeah. Uh Good Times. So all those. Yeah. Sanford so, and Sons. I mean so, it, there's tons of yes, them. Yes, there's so there's the love boat. Love. Lord. Exciting and fancy all. Yeah. So I mean there's just tons of those that, that have you know that They're you know catchy. all the words to. But for the most part the ones that the ones that I named are ones that I could actually put on a playlist and listen, and listen to in the car on a yeah. nice drive. Mine are for the most part. Or something like that. So um, if you all are interested in uh, giving us your feedback. I would love to hear what you have to say. I think this is so much fun. I know that when some of you hear our list, you go to work. You get your pen out and your paper and you sit and do this yourself and then you list them all out for us and that's that's exactly what I want. Because just like Kevin named the West World, and I cannot think of that right now, I'm gonna go listen to that and I'm I'm hoping that you all will probably name some that we don't that we haven't thought of or have never heard of or before. Haven't listed for and then time. we will go and listen and see what we think of yours too. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. I do have more lists to come um, that we'll be doing. We'll we'll try to keep doing this because I think it's fun. Because not only are we sharing with you and you get to share with us. But we're sharing stuff with each other too that that we yeah, haven't. We haven't. About. We don't talk about. Them. No, yeah, we don't discuss them at all. So it's completely new to us too. I have some packages here to open. Um, this one is from the Cuban food market. So I bet you this is from. Yes, this is going to be from Iris, and she sent us the golden caramel flan. Um, uh, custard so we will be trying that from Goya so thank you very much Iris and then John I've just opened the box I haven't read it he said hi Tammy here is the land of lakes I've been able to find the store that has all of them is too far to attempt by bus right now um, I saw you already did the s'mores and salted caramel the caramel included here is a different flavor don't know why they have a caramel and salted caramel, but there it is. I uh, wish I could send more. Maybe one day when things calm down, I'll try uh, to get the other flavors. Thank you for all you do for us. Same for Kevin, Ashley, and Andrew. Take care. Um, Kevin, I know you're off Tim Hortons, but I received the sample, but don't have a Keurig. It's too finely ground for me to open and pour into a coffee filter. If you don't want to use them, maybe you know someone who might want them. So apparently there's gonna be some Tim Hortons in here. Now, I will tell you, John sent me these. Um, this is the Land O'Lakes, uh, their cocoa. So we have Arctic White, we have Raspberry, we have Chocolate Supreme, and I love all the shiny uh, packaging. Caramel, Hazelnut, French Vanilla, and Cinnamon. And um, he told me that he's also sending me a mint. He said that um, he forgot to stick it in here, so there is a mint coming from John too. These are the Tim Hortons. Look at that, that's neat. That's cool. You'll Hey, I'll just drink them. Yeah, Kevin will definitely drink that. And then these, I think it's hilarious that he sent us these because when we did the Laffy Taffy review, we did not get a um, we did not get the apple pie, and I and uh, so John bought these and he got apple pie. I only bought one bag, and so we got every flavor. But so we're gonna try this. I'm going to try it right now. Mm, that's a good apple flavor. Mm-hmm. It tastes like Laffy Daffy apple. It does. I could see why they would say apple pie because I do think it has a cinnamon to it as well. So not only do you get apple, it's really apple cinnamon, and so it really tastes like that, um, the, the pie filling. You like it, Kevin? Mm, it's good. It's so I like Laffy Dabby anyway. 
What else did he send us? Oh. Look like banana or something. Pineapple. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are so good. So thank you very John for uh, very much John for thinking of us. And Iris, um, I will add this. I'll probably add this to the other Goya that you sent us and maybe try them together. We came in a furniture store to look around and I want you to see the rain that is outside. I mean, it is coming down. Kevin is getting a free car wash right now. This guy's walking in the door and he is soaking wet. Or he was gonna, I thought he was gonna walk in the door. I want you to look. Yeah, Kevin's car is right out there. So he's getting a free car wash. We noticed that the trees, uh, that there was a lot of wind um, whipping through the trees on our way here, but I had no idea that it was going to rain this bad. So hopefully you all can see this, because it's pretty, it's pretty hard out there. So we, you saw all that rain just a while ago. So we came back to Winchester. We were in Lexington and we came back to Winchester and the lights are out. So the lights were out right when we got off the interstate. And then the lights are out here at the, the bypass and Lexington Avenue. And so the police are out here having to direct traffic. So that was a really bad storm. I mean, we saw um, where uh, lots of like leaves and stuff like that. We saw a big sign that had blown over on the interstate. Um, from a field so that was a really really bad storm that came through here um and andrew said that uh, in winchester he said did you he texted me he said did you hear the alarms going off and no we did not because we were not in winchester but we would have heard the um i guess the emergency um storm alarm if we had been in town so anyway i just wanted to show you it it came through and thank the lord we didn't have to drive through it on the way home oh did you tell them that the billboard fell down i was like, yeah the billboard yes there was a billboard that fell down uh yeah but thank goodness we didn't have to drive through it on the way home because i'm i'm such a nervous passenger and i'm 10 times worse when it's raining so i'm glad that um we were in that furniture store long enough to where um it passed by so now we just have to get through this traffic because Ashley's wanting to run into Kroger. Well, the last thing you saw last night was we got back into Winchester and we got on our bypass and the lights were out. So we waited through traffic and waited and waited and waited and we finally made it to Kroger and we had told Ashley, we were like, Kroger probably isn't taking any money or anything if the electricity's out because every place we were passing it looked like the electricity was out. So I gave her some cash, but I'm thinking they're not going to take cash. Even if the power's out, they're not going to take cash because they can't ring, ring it up. Well, she got out of the car and she couldn't even <laughs> open the door. The door was, she said, guess what? Their doors are electric doors and so they won't even open or close. They're, they were closed. So one of my nieces works there and she had even gotten off work early because the power went out so um so um, ashley was wanting some uh, panko breadcrumbs she um she did a video earlier uh, she did a video it'll be last week for you all showing how to make this um, chicken parmesan sandwich which is absolutely wonderful um but she was out of panko breadcrumbs. So she was going to run in and get panko breadcrumbs and milk. And then she's like, well, um, I have Italian breadcrumbs at home. So she just came home and she made her chicken, but she just used Italian breadcrumbs, which those are good, but they're, it's not as, um, it's not as crispy as the panko breadcrumbs. So it, it still works, but you know, and, and it, since we buy the Italian, um, it'll get, it gave it a little bit more flavor than just the regular panko breadcrumbs. But, uh, so anyway, she was fine. So, um, I'm going to end the vlog here because, um, um, it's long and I think some people don't like them when they're longer and, I, um, some people love them when they're long and I'm glad that you all like them when they're long. Um, but, and not every week is this long. It's just that when we do the Q and A's and stuff like that, where we're answering our top, our top five of this or our top 10 of that, um, 
those tend to run a little bit longer but hopefully you all are interested in and the subjects enough to where you want to watch anyway so and i wanted to give you one more update um i showed i think it was in last week's video me taking a picture of all my sister's clowns and i put her whole clown collection i put them on the local trading post and i did have not gotten one not one question even about them so somebody in the comments last week mentioned uh let go so i put them i also i've never put anything on let go but i put them on let go and um i still haven't gotten any questions about them so and i'm only i've only got 150 dollars on them i mean somebody could make me an offer uh but 150 dollars for i think there were like 24 clowns that's only like i don't know eight bucks a piece or something like that and you're talking about a, it's something that was out in the 80s and they're in great shape they're porcelain you know clowns i'm just shocked because i know a lot of people in the comments were like Oh, clowns are creepy, 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 creepy. I've never seen them as creepy. That's just me, though. I don't think clowns are creepy at all. I, um, I, was, I was raised with the clowns, and I've just never thought the clowns were creepy. My parents took me to the circus. Clowns were always a source of happiness. Andrew, when he uh, was little for Halloween one year, he dressed up as a clown. I've never thought clowns were bad i think i don't know I, I even though i've seen like the american horror story with the clown and um it the the movie it um i just i don't know that's just not clowns to me clowns are around to bring happiness and uh they're not for scaring so i just i guess i don't see clowns the way that everybody sees them but for me they're a source of enjoyment and i think they're they're beautiful dolls if i had room i would buy them from her and keep them here myself but i don't have a a space to keep them well and they would get dusty you know stuff like that gets dusty and you have to keep it clean but i'm just surprised that i haven't gotten one person who's been interested in them at all because I'm not asking a lot for them. So, but anyway, I hope you all had a good week. I'll see you next week.